Hello everyone, hello, my name is Arthur, I'm a wizard. Welcome back to Norco. So, what ha what's been happening in Norco lately? Well, um, we, uh, we did a lot. We got through the first chapter. Uh, I think I'll pick it up today. I was reading, I was watching the video and I was reading a bit slow. So I think I'll pick it up a little bit faster today. Before we start, I wanted to return to Google Maps because uh, I was having another look at it. Let's bring it up in the screen right quick. Uh, no, that's game capture. Uh, map. Oh, I have it. Oh, right, I've got minimized. That's that's why it's a problem. There we go. Transition. Right, so. Um, here's Norco. I don't know if this picks up on the video. Let's zoom in a little bit here so we've got norco over here it might be easier to recognize it with the uh satellite layout uh we've got norco over here i just noticed actually that <clears throat> this street here is apple street and that is actually where we begin the game uh, we live on the corner of apple and third which means that our house is like we walk to Apple and Third. We, we we live on Apple, but we live somewhere around that. So we have like this house here. It is it really is just like one of these houses that is where the game take the game begins. <clears throat> but we then went to amongst other places, including our own mind. Uh, we went to uh, Sarpy's. New Sarpy's bookstore. And New Sarpy is an actual place. It's right here. So what must have happened is that we went and got on a bike, a motorcycle, we had a robot drive us from Apple Street here. We went down to 48 River Road and drove River Road to New Sarpy's. And then from New Sarpy, I believe now we are in Destrahan, which is right down here. And consists of like four streets, four or five streets. Uh, let's take a satellite look at it. Rather empty. So I thought that was neat since these are all real places. And it's very faithful to... The game is very face faithful to real life. It's, it's very faithful to how things would be in laid out in the real world um if if i think we're going to see duke is that it i think we're going to see duke today uh, and if he lives in destrahan he might they might call it destrahan he might live in in this area here that's a little bit more populated you would you would indeed see the norco plant from the from the back so if he lives like here on like gabriel or something like that he would you would see this in the distance. So it's just a very faithful rendition of a place that probably not a lot of people have been to and know about. I just thought, that's cool. Turn this off, transition. Uh, oops, I've turned off the game capture. No, I want to turn off the map. <laughs> there we go, all right. Uh, and then we'll exit out of here and all right, everything looks good. Oh, I've moved my um, my person. I've moved myself over to the left so people can see the map on the right. Uh, let's continue, and we'll start from, I don't know, I guess the autosave. It doesn't matter. Yes. Okay, great. Grant. So here you can see there's there's the shield plant in the, in the background. And, uh, oh, no, we're in Dimes. Okay, not Destrahan. I don't know where Dimes is, is in relation. Uh, anybody have anything to say? Robot? This is Doc's home. Oh, right, not Duke, it's Doc. Duke would be a cooler name. The last house standing in dimes. Really, the last house. Uh, we need to find a way into the refinery. LeBlanc suggested we visit Doc. This is true. There's a fugitive hiding in, along the Batour. Also true. We've talked about these things. Monkey? He stares with more intense inti intensity until his gaze passes through you. You become invisible to him. Keep staring. 
Little circles of light pool in the doors tire of ours as they watch the infinite space beyond your being. The air that hangs between your eyes and his is a vacuum of utter stillness. You look away. Alright. Well, I suppose we knock on the door after we look at it. The house is partially boarded up. You assume it's an artifact of a hurricane preparation that has since become a permanent fixture. Yeah, I wouldn't bother taking them down either. <clears throat> so walk to the door. Oh. Oh. We just... We just walk straight into his house. No knocking. No nothing like that. Oh, God. Uh, hello, sir. Doc. Not the first ones to come through here, toppling over all my shite in the dark. Since the buyout, people think this neighbourhood's all the way empty, come around looking for copper. But you wouldn't do that kind of thing, eh? Hey? Not like your brother. Oh yeah. So, our brother's a bit of a mess, he's a, drug, he's a drug dealer. And he's an utter failure. Of course, we're not really much better. Uh, you're just hanging out in the dark? Yeah, I am. I mean, it is his house. He can do if he wants to. Anyway, how's it been, how's it been Doc? How's it been? How it looks. I made such a mess with that head drive, just trying to keep myself out of trouble till it's my turn to go. So, head drive. I unleashed it. The monster. Super Doc. Calls itself that just to get to me, just to piss me off. It's my fault. That company that made it for me, I should have known from the get-go. They only do their business at night. Found out later they don't even have a license. Not a license? Oi, you got a license for that super doc? Mate? Your mother went to the same clinic for hers. I tried to warn her. The junk that was in my brain. <laughs> it's spreading around like a virus. It's even in the trees. I told your mother, don't get messed up in any of that. She tells me it's talking to her through the radio. I said, turn off the radio. She never listens. Stopped responding to me. Figure that monster's got money to burn. Catherine didn't want to leave a debt for you to deal with, so... Uh, so you kept up with my mum? Up until right near the end, gay. Eh? She lived like she wasn't sick. She never quit. Quit smoking or quit? I guess it, I guess it was smoking. It started in the liver. They burned it out. Thought maybe that was the end of it. Oh, a liver ablation. Oh, fancy. Before you know it, they found a little in her lungs. They're talking about her cancer. She was still going all over town, walking up and down airline like some kind of bag lady. Figure she thought it'd go away if she ignored it, but that didn't work out for her. Once it came for me, it never did quit. Been getting sores. From from the cancer? How, how do you do that? Cramps every day. Can't keep nothing down. Oh, oh, from the chemo. Yeah, sure. Tried to tell her that. Say, Catherine, this is not the kind of thing you can work off. You think she listened? By the time it got to her brain, that was all there was to it. No more working, no more doing nothing. But she'd already gotten fed up with me by that point. Never really made amends before they put her in that mausoleum with your daddy. Hurts my heart thinking about it. But what can you do? No hiding from God's will. So... Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned a buyout. You must have noticed coming in. The houses are all gone. People here have been fighting with S.H.I.E.L.D. all their lives. They got a little momentum on the side after the last explosion. The papers were making S.H.I.E.L.D. look bad. But hell, we were here first. Shield moved in, we suffered. Gas leaks, noise, explosions. Can't grow my vegetables out in the yard, just won't grow. I never cared to move, but I knocked doors for it anyhow. If Shield had ever dropped it in on us, my little plot of land would be worth something. That's that's debatable. <laughs> it's probably not still worth anything. Uh, but you can keep thinking that, mate. Money they were offering to buy us out. That was all right. Be worth a lot more had they never come. Number they put in front of me, I said, piss on it. I could have sued after Reese died. I just didn't have the energy for it. Now I'm the last one left in dimes. So... I'm sorry about Reese. Shame, he exploded. 
It's history. Most days I can't remember his face, if I'm honest. When you fill out the survey at the head drive clinic, they ask you to write down memories. Control points, they call them. I couldn't stand to write out his name. It was too painful. I skipped his memory. I regretted it at first, but I'm, I'm thankful for it now. Be a lot worse if that monster carried a piece of my boy inside it. Uh, I think we have more questions about your, my mom. <clears throat> Not really sure. This monster, my mom was working for it. Hate even thinking about that thing. It knows I'm here dying while it grows and grows. Big, disgusting, toxic birds sprouting from the ground all over the region with teeth and hands and all kinds of shit. Unbelievable. Turns me stomach. But you know what? I won't be the first to die, hell no. It is. It roped your mother into some lunacy. She wouldn't tell me the details. I couldn't get a single word out of her after a point. Uh, did you attend her funeral? Planned to. Arranged for my godchild to pick me up and everything, but the day of the service I couldn't hardly walk. I heard from a couple of people it was a beautiful one. For all the bridges she burned, there was plenty of people who had nice things to say about her. Even a few of her colleagues from the university showed up, the ones who got her so sacked. I know that chap her ass. They buried her with that fake little ring she always wore around her neck. She said it reminded her who she was. Figure she probably wanted it to give to you, but you were gone. And Blake, well, he'd have pawned it too anyway. He'd have pawned it to anyone fool enough to buy it. So, um... The ring she wore around her neck was fake. You don't know that story? Kind of funny if it weren't so sad. Your granddaddy wanted to prove he was from royal stock. So he broke into a pawn shop up there on the airline and stole the biggest ruby he could find. Went around telling everyone it was from the old world, said it travelled from France to Nova Scotia and down the Mississippi River. Well, that was a bunch of bullshit. He ended up in Angola for it, though they never did find the ring. I don't follow. How did he end up in Angola? From, I guess from the burglary, and he escaped back to Angola? I didn't understand. Catherine took it to an appraiser one time. It's cubic zirconia. Fake. The man spent months in jail for a fake piece of jewellery. After that, everyone started calling him King Pierre. They laughed him out of the crevasse. And my mom was fired from university? Sure, you were young. Couldn't have been too long after Blue passed. She lied up and down to get that job. Nothing special. Just a community college in the city. But that's Catherine. Never wanted to play it straight. Suppose Blake took after her in that respect. Uh, that's it. Enough about my mum. Uh, we're trying to get into the refinery. Not a good idea, Kay. What for? Uh, we think they stole my mum's stuff. We have no proof other than a fat, bloated, drunken... Uh, private investigator who... Who watches us while, whilst he takes a shite, told us. But we really think it happened. Well, that's interesting. The regional executive, she took a particular interest in your mother. Uh, why? She wanted to know things Catherine knew, I suppose. Your mother was out in the lake. She heard S.H.I.E.L.D. or somebody was building some kind of rig out there. She wanted to find out for herself. She didn't find what she was looking for, but she found something. Hmm. Sound me like her medication was messing up her head, but she insisted it was real. Some kind of UFO. Said it followed her up for nearly a mile. But anyhow, that CEO they got at S.H.I.E.L.D., she's about as far out of her mind as your mother was. She must have caught wind of all this. Catherine got to be careful in her old age. Paranoid, even. The important things she kept hidden. Whatever S.H.I.E.L.D. stole, it wasn't nothing important. I mean, probably not. To be honest, I mean, we don't have anything in particular that's important to us. But you want to get it back anyway, because you're a video game protagonist. Can you help us get in? I'm going to regret telling you this, but I've been sitting on it so long, been dying to tell somebody. I don't know how S.H.I.E.L.D. managed to do it, but they fucked up. They bought out this neighborhood, and ever since they did, they put me behind the firewall. <clears throat> Pardon me.
<clears throat> okay, I am. Um, <clears throat> I I don't think I can do Black Dennis Hopper anymore. <laughs> uh, I have to I have to use my normal voice or something akin to it. <clears throat> Got a computer terminal back there. Every time I boot it up, I get a view of the inside. Not like I know what the hell to do with it. Clicked around a bit, but just got myself lost. Can't hardly read the screen. Computer's back there in my little library. Have a look. And whatever you do, Kay, I'm asking you to be careful. Okay. Uh, bye. Uh, where's your computer, mate? Oh, right, we have to use the map. Back in his library. Well, he keeps this room lit. Okay, hang on a moment. Uh, we've got a lot of thoughts there. No, oh God. Uh, all right, Blue. He's in a ma mausoleum. Well, yes, of course, he's dead. So, Blue wasn't buried. He was interred in a mausoleum. He visited a few times as a kid. Uh, it's been added to our map. A Catherine bought... Catherine brought flowers and prayed there. You sat restlessly, waiting for her to finish. Afterwards, she dragged you into the church that faced River Road to make you touch the holy water. She watched you motion the sign of the cross before you fixing, you fi fixing your shirt. She held your shoulder as the two of you left. Okay. So we are indeed Catholic. Doc is an old friend of your mom's who lost his son when a shield pipeline cutting through their yard exploded. Um, if you read Norco on Wikipedia, that, that is actually something that happened back in, like, the 50s. Uh, some bloke was mowing the yard, and um, he cut a pipeline, and everything just totally exploded. He survived, actually, I believe, for a while. He versioned his consciousness at the same clinic as her. They fa fell out of church before she died. He lives in dimes and is in poor health. Okay, uh, the ring. Your grandpa broke into a pawn shop and stole a, a jewel ring to ho uphold the lie that he was descended from French royalty. Makes perfect sense. What was he going to get out of that? Uh, your mom later discovered that the ruby was made from synthetic material. She still wore the ring around her neck until she died. She was buried with it. Buried with it, you say? Head drive. Your mom versioned her consciousness at the same disreputable neural versioning clinic as Doc. The device that hosts her consciousness is called a head drive. Okay. Do we have it? It's likely that's what uh, Laura stole. Laura St. Clair is... Interested in your mom. Doc speculates that it's because of the object your mom observed in the lake. Right. So, putting two and two together to make four, we can surmise that probably uh, Laura had her thugs steal the head drive, which contains the images of something in the lake uh, that were in your mom's head. As you do. Ephemera. A collection of bills, letters, and photographs are pinned to the board. The photographs are of various industrial and infrastructural landscapes that you recognize from around the region. The Geismar aluminium refinery, the grain elevators downriver, the airport control tire. It's a console. Books. You peruse the titles on the bookshelf. U.S. Army Corps Anomalous Light Report. A report on the levitating spheres of light witnessed by multiple onlookers above Camp Memory in the Bonnet Carré spillway throughout the spring and summer of YX-1S, commissioned by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. After careful survey of the so soil content in the area near Camp Memory, our inquiry has determined anaerobic conditions conducive to the formation of confined pockets of gas that, given exposure to sufficient heat, may ignite. These spontaneous incidents of combustion were likely mistaken for floating luminous spheres. Right, that is a thing that happens in swamps. Pardon me, pardon me. Um, <clears throat> swamp gas, will of the wisps, if you want to call them that. Uh, it happens all the time, so. The pig man. Some claim that the pig man is a type of grunch who hides behind the interstate beneath the interstate bridges that cross Lake Pontchartrain. 
Legend has it that if you bring the pig man a gift, he will return a gift to you in kind. Okay. There's a box. Let's look at it. A strange ornamental box. Uh, open it. You attempt to open the box. It's locked. Sensible. Figures and figures as much. A trophy sitting atop the bookshelf reads Junior Champion Reese Richard, St. Charles, Paris, yx 2 A dear head. The head of a book is mounted to the wall. So it is. A, a printer. A printout containing the letterhead of a law office in Metairie. 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 Sits in the tray of the printer. Mr. Richard, after carefully studying the circumstances of the buyer, we recommend that you proceed with relocation. Shield is not legally obligated to provide you with an easement. You may find yourself trespassing on private property when leaving or returning to your home. Console. A computer console with a large trackpad and magnified display. Touch the console. You'll pass, you pass your finger over the trackpad, waking the machine. Shield security terminal is displayed on the console. Use terminal. You sit before the shield terminal display. Eh, uh, eh, uh, uh, what's going on? <laughs> what is going on here? This is a map of shield sentinel drone security fleet. The entrance to the refinery is in zone A here if we want to gain access to the refinery then it may be necessary to clear the sentinels from the zone there are currently three drones patrolling zone a one two three perhaps there is a way of relocating them to other zones choose the drones three choose a destination from the neighboring boundaries of the security zone uh, this one. Oh, okay. Wait, no, I don't want to do that at all. Uh, there we go. It seems there is a precaution in place to prevent any zone from being unsecured, but there may be a way around this. No zone can host more than three drones. Drone zone. When one zone contains no drones, then the maximum capacity neighbor will reallocate a drone to its unsecured neighbor. This means that when removing the last drone from zone A, we must be sure that none of its neighbor is at maximum capacity. Understood. Um. Because that's at maximum capacity. Uh, can we send it to B? Okay. Could we not just select a different location? There we go. Yeah, so we'll just send a drone out there. And then we'll send another drone out... Uh, no. No, no. It's fine. Uh, move that back right quick and then we'll select yeah. okay it seems you are only given 10 control operations before the system resets no security area can host more than three drones at a time when a drone is sent to an area that is at maximum capacity the destination area sends one of its drones to an unsecured neighbor understood right i understand i completely understand uh, so, we just need to dis diffuse the drones around the area. So, G is already full of drones. Uh, so, F can accept one drone. So, we'll put a, a drone in F. And now, E can accept a drone. Uh, so, now we can go to A and put a drone in E. 
And now E is effectively at max capacity because all the zones around A must be at three minus one. So D is at maximum capacity. However, if we move a drone into H, H is now at maximum capacity. Uh, we can then take a drone from A and move it into D. Grand. And now, uh, deselect that. This is at maximum, this is at maximum. Uh, I, however, is not. So we'll take it at H and move it into I. And then... Uh, take a D drone, I suppose, and move it into H. And then move an A drone into D. Bob's your uncle. The drones have been cleared from the entrance area of the refinery. I suspect this will be helpful. Very good. Nobody will notice that. I'm positive. Uh, anything else? Shall I turn the lamp off for you? There you go. <laughs> Alright. Uh, goodbye, Dennis Hopper. It was nice talking to you. We shall leave. Uh, now we need to go to the Batour. Let's save. We need to go to the Batour and find Lucky. That would be a dimes discount, so we'll go there. Go over here to the Batour. Uh, how do we do that? Oh, like this. Hey! Hello. It's, we just find him. It's Lucky. He's just sitting right here. Are of you seen a dog? A little black pit. Green eyes. You see her send her this way. She answers to Pots. Uh, you the one they're looking for? Well, so what? Lucky make the news. They want trouble. Here I am. You see that dog? You send her this way. Yeah, no problem. We got you covered, mate. Uh, the dog was at uh, the um, bookstore. So we have to drive all the way back to the bookstore. Talk to the dog. Uh, look at the dog. Million, would you mind? Uh, the dog sitting near the entrance, she matches the description given by Lucky. Right. Uh, do I have to mind map myself? Lucky. A fugitive oil pirate hiding in the Mississippi River Batua Woods. His dog has gone missing. Right. This is all things that we've established. Uh, this dog looks kind of hungry. What do dogs eat? Dog food, bruh. Dogs eat dog food. Dogs do eat dog food. Oh, I know. There is dog food in the discount store. In the uh, gas station. It's right here. It's right over here. Uh, we'll take some. We have infinite money, which is very helpful. So we'll scan it. You scan the dog food. Thank you for Burgess. All right, and uh, now we leave. And now we drive <clears throat> perhaps 30 to 45 minutes back to the bookstore. We've now taken about two hours to do this. Uh, we can give the dog some dog food. You pour a heap of dog of food onto, just straight onto the ground right before the dog. She laps the, up the kibble and follows behind you as you step away. She's joined the party, All right? Um, so now I guess we have to get back to the Batour on our bike with a dog. So we're on a mo motorcycle. We're sitting behind a robot. On our backs is a monkey. And we're, I guess we held the, the dog in a lap. And we have some dog food too, by the way. Don't forget that. Uh, back to the Batour. Hello, Lucky. Pots! You brought back my pot liquor. She was having me worry. 
pot now. She tough as they come, but Lucky thought they had her. He reaches down and pets the dog behind her ears as she pants eagerly. He regards Million. Say, Robot, you look familiar. You a Claire Bionics unit? No, not anymore. Thank you. All right, then. Just thought you might fill Lucky in on a little gossip. Uh, what gossip? Laura St. Clair, she's one unusual character, turning that refinery inside out on some wild goose chase. Uh, for what? What I was hoping the robot might tell me. But anyhow, they call me Lucky. I stick around here. You need help, you find me. Help is just what I need. That right? We must infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D. to retrieve some stolen property. We could use a hand. I done got past them fences more than I can count. That's a good time. He even got me a couple of grenades in my bag. Grenades? It, you sure about that, mate? Um, okay. Lucky will come. You can count on Lucky. Now that there are so many of us, we'll need the truck to get around. Let's return to the house. I hope to finish repairs quickly. Hello, Lucky. What you got, Kay? Uh, what do you know about S.H.I.E.L.D.? Lucky know about all there is to know. What about it? Um, how long has the facility been in Norco? S.H.I.E.L.D. came here early. All this area was plantations. Weren't no money in that after slavery. But isn't this like... That would have been in, like, the 50s. Is this, like, a different world entirely where where slavery didn't end in, in the Civil War? Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand that. You got all that oil right there in the Gulf. Oil companies come in and get the land cheap. River connects straight to it. The whole operation down here used to be run from their central headquarters. Then they split it up and get, to get around some laws. Now you've got this regional corporation with Laura St. Clair at the top. Man laughs. But they regret that idea. Uh, tell me about her. Laura St. Clair's the regional executive of S.H.I.E.L.D. Norco. Board of Directors appointed, a, appointed her because of Thomas, her daddy. They was thinking they get her, they get her daddy. Is that how it works? When you get hired? It's not for other influences or your skill. It's it's to get your dad. I didn't I didn't follow her. Look how that worked out. She done lost her mind, and Thomas, he don't want nothing to do with her. Oh, what do you mean? Well, hell, it's in all the newspapers. She's been sending survey teams out into the lake. Why she send them out there? Doesn't make no sense. That area of the lake, they ain't got no oil. No salt domes, whatever she's looking for. It ain't much to do with oil. Uh, tell me about Thomas, then. Thomas started the company that gets all the security contracts around here. Got his degree from LSU, moved out to California to make robots. As you do. Man's a billionaire. Shield's board of directors appointed his daughter, thinking they could get some of his expertise at a discount. Oh. I guess that makes sense. And they ain't known the drama back then, but they sure know it now. Thomas legally disowned his daughter. She tried stealing Claire Bionics out from under him. Some people say she even tried to kill him. Oh, that's enough about S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh. Uh. No. Enough. Enough. Shut up, old man. You from around here? Lucky come from Vachere, right up the river. But he done travelled the land, walked to Knoxville, sailed to Mexico. Lucky done seen a good piece of this world. How long have you had Potts? Potts been Lucky's side two years. Found her pregnant beneath a car one day. Couldn't stand to see her like she was. Met a man with some land and wanted the babies. Thought we'd part ways eventually, but shoot. Guess I got used to being around her. She returned all I did for her many times. Nice. Great. Good. So now we have a criminal, and a pit bull, and a robot, and a monkey. Sensible. Right, uh, back to the house. Oh, uh, no? Oh, we can just walk to the house. Oh, right, because there's too many of us. We're too fat to fit on the, the bicycle. The motorcycle, I should say. Uh, we don't know where to stick in the version Mary. 
Yeah, I had to say it like that. Sue me. Kitchen. Backyard. Lucky, uh, what are you doing, mate? Lucky waits beside the truck. Right. So this Miss Mod... This, so this Miss Modere's house, then. Lucky knew your mama a bit. A how? She was around. Seen a time or two. She wasn't no friend to the other companies, either. They'd have liked to have her dead. Uh, that's too grim. <laughs> Do you worry about yourself? He squints, grimaces, shakes his head. No. Nah. These companies want to get off the oil. Too much trouble. Uh, what do you mean? They put them wind turbines out in the gulf. And now they are building a brain. A brain? Hell, everybody know they in there building a brain. All the refineries is doing that. Going to hook them all up. Make a bigger brain. <laughs> make a bigger brain that will be programmed to play Osu and, and talk to chat. It, it'll work out just fine. But then it'll get banned for saying racist things. But that ain't enough to outsmart Lucky. Lucky's smarter than any big brain you can dream up. Smarter than the smartest big brain. Wow. They're going to use it to find fuel out in space. Well, wouldn't you have to build a rocket too? <laughs> Not just a brain, you need a rocket as well. Best of luck to them. Ain't nothing wrong with trying to make a book. Uh, then why get in the way? Lucky ain't in nobody's way. Everybody like Lucky just fine. Didn't you blow up an oil pipeline? He maintains a neutral expression as he watches the tree line. Lucky done blown up all kinds of shit. All right, I like you, Lucky. You're, you're all right. You're all right, mate. People think Lucky hates Shield. Lucky don't hate Shield. He just caught it causing trouble. But that Shield ain't nobody have a job in this place. But here come that robot. We best get moving. You want to talk more? Just tap me on the show. Will you? Man, what a great guy. What an absolutely fabulous man. Carries around grenades on him. Has a dog. What a, what a cool guy. I wish I was like him. I finished repairing the truck. Shall we attempt to access shield? Uh, yeah, sure. Monkey flies from the bed of the truck as million speeds down the highway. Oh, shame. We lost Monkey. Uh, we can think about it. We think about ourselves. Shield. Shield is... Building a brain, apparently. Lucky says Shield is developing an artificial intelligence in order to conduct exploratory missions from off-world middle reserves. Uh, and we believe him implicitly because um, he's not portrayed as a bad man. So, of course he's, he's correct. Okay. Uh, we're going to shield. Oh. No sentinel drones around here. Once we clear these two, we're in. Ready? Um. Y yes, but... I... Is there combat in this game? What do I do? Let's do it. The man nods. Uh. 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 Well, Lucky... Go get him. There's actual combat in this game. Uh, attack this man. I got shot. What a shame. Million. Uh, attack this man. I shall attack. Millions in a bad way.
Okay, I'm nearly dead. Okay. Right, we survived. Nothing much to it. <laughs> when them sentinels not around, they let you more or less walk into the place. Um, didn't we just shoot live ammunition around? How did we actually attack them? And would you t take a look at that big fella? The freight mover. Hell of a machine. Could really put on a show with one of them. Hmm. Look, he's just thinking out loud. Let's get to it, eh? Refinery's ours. Okay, well, that was easy. Right, back to Catherine. Uh, she is experiencing uh, dementia. <laughs> We're talking to a bird. It's Super Talk. Catherine, you made it to this warehouse with Big Bird. I sure did. We have a job for you. It'll pay. It will solve some problems before you die. Dallas! Hmm? No stranger to the network, you will assist Catherine. Yes. Catherine, in the lake, you saw the stone. We saw you see the stone. We want the stone, but it's evaded us. I gotcha. Right. Superdoc is, what else? A network. A system of signals. Wireless communication of locusts and frogs. Cypress roots. Disease vectors. Internet of flesh. Biomimicry. Internet of internet. Radio towers. Distributed II. Distributed birds in flight. Superdoc saw you see the stone because Superdoc was an eagle in the sky. The stone is a sky thing that may many want, but it reveals itself to no one. No one except for you, Catherine. It followed you through the lakes. It loves you. It seeks you. It will submit to you. But we must act fast. Shield wants the stone. Claire Bionics wants the stone. Superduck wants the stone. And John has the stone. John! Everybody hates John. Everyone follows John. He's an influencer. He's a dopamine fiend. Convinced himself he has faith in God. Convinced others even. Some young and idealistic, some old and bitter. These are the Garretts of John. You will find them gathered in the bowels of the Promenade Mall in Kenner. John has a hidden, hidden the stone in this forgotten place. He will use the stone in an attempt to fulfill his prophecies. But his are a prophecy of fools. Right. Got it? Go get me my shiny stone! Hurry! Before you die! I want to eat it! Have a good evening! Go on, get me my shiny stone. What are you waiting for? Um. Oh, okay. Alright. I feel almost as if we need a companion for this. Um, hang on a moment. Uh, how do I... Well, let's save because we had combat and it was very deadly. Yes. Back. Back. Uh... Hang on a moment. No. Um... I want to get out of full screen. Cannot t tab to my desktop to open VTube Studio and load J chat G GPT in. That's fine. Um, I suppose we leave. Can you please explain to me what the hell? <laughs> so wait. Sorry, go, go, go on. No, you go, you go. What was that? <laughs> what was what? There's a bird with teeth the size of my head living inside that warehouse. Uh, yeah. That's normal to you? No, but I mean, I've seen some stuff in my life. Me too, but... What's this stone? He said it loves you. What was that all about? I don't know. I saw a drone or something in the lake. Why does he keep calling it a stone, though? Stone, drone, I have no idea. I was a little distracted. Well, I need you to start paying attention, or neither one of us is getting that pay tonight. I've got the gist. Some internet weirdos are living in the mall and they've got the stone. That's right. Kenna John and his gang. 
They're keeping the stone at the old promenade mall in Kenner. We need to find a way inside, get the stone, and bring it back here. You got that? Go to the abandoned mall, steal the stone. The magical stone? Bring it to the giant warehouse, bird. Couldn't be more clear. Right. What's in the office? Doors are locked. The office is closed. Good. Traffic. A steady bead of traffic lights the sky along the causeway. Uh, Dallas. Biggest node in the network is inside this building. I'm a little lost. What's up? I don't know what the hell's going on. Superduck is... What? Superduck. Yeah. What is it? Something like a virus. It infects things. Animals, trees, phones, whatever else. So what was that thing in the warehouse? A node in the network. There's a handful around the region. You use the app long enough, you get to know them. And the app is doing for doing whatever this virus wants you to do? I don't know, just how, the, how I keep the lights on. <laughs> Dallas is nonplussed by all this. I like him. Uh, who is John? The thing in the warehouse mentioned a John. Kenner John. You don't know Kenner John? Never heard of him. Happy for you. He makes videos. Oh god, no, he's a YouTuber. How disgusting. Imagine someone uploading videos to the internet. They get shared all over the internet. I watched a couple. Religious stuff. Irreligious. I turned away for a while, but the cancer brought me back. No doubt. John's a divisive figure among the faithful. Not the most orthodox preacher. Uh, right, so where did we find this stone? The thing's... Super is looking for. Probably not more than Kenner. That's what Super said, anyhow. Right, I understood. Great. Very good. All right. Uh, uh, we'll go and order an Uber. Pay through the nose for it. Uh, probably not more. Five dollars ninety cents. I used to come here all the time as a kid. Same. I knew it fell on hard times, didn't know just how hard. A single car sits in this parking lot. A subdivision at the mall's rear is beyond the lot. That's Keith? Who? Keith Broussard, guy I went to high school with. Where'd you go to high school? Destrahan. Oh, we saw that in the map. Uh, that I brought up. Destrahan's right down the street. Not so odd you'd see him here. In an abandoned parking lot in the rain in the middle of the night? Yeah, why not? There's nothing cooler than chilling out in, in, in your beat up car in the middle of a parking, in a car park in the middle of the night. Guess I've been on this app too long. Seems fine to me. <laughs> yeah, see, Dallas gets it. Hey, Keith. Kate. All right, sister, thought that was you. What's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm working. Me too. Working a, ca working a case. Starting me a little news website. Uh, what's the website about? What's this website? Ain't got a name yet. Still trying to come up with something cool. That'd be a nice name for a website. Something cool. Much better than something like, something awful. Who would name a website that? Keith's News Alert or something like that. No, 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 mate. He's out of touch. I'm just trying to report on what's really happening around here. What are you investigating? Tell me about the case you're working on, Keith. I'm trying to get to the bottom of what's going on in this mall right here. Heard they got small boys coming in and out. Textbook adenochrome harvesting facility. <laughs> oh no, the adenochrome! Oh no, for the for the for the lizard the lizard people. Guy who runs the operation looks about as much like a pervert as you can picture. Kenner John, you got it. Man looks like a slug. What do you know about Kenner John? I know he got his start posting in the comments section on New Orleans news and views. That's a way to get your start on the internet. He go in there saying he learned how to speak to God. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah, 
That checks out. Got himself some attention that way. Before you know it, this gaggle of boys started following him around. Sick stuff. Guy's a sicko. Alright, that's enough out of you. I should keep moving, but maybe I'll come back later to see how things go. The case is going. I'd like that, sister. Come pass by. Why I don't see you around so often these days. I'm staying busy. You mind me asking you something? Just a thing I, I find I myself wonder about. Sure. Don't mean for this to be rude, but um, how come you treated Blue the way you did? One of the best men I ever knew. Why would you ask that? You kept his name. Figured it couldn't have been all bad. Just something I wonder. Well, wonder about something else. Eh, uh, fick it, I asked. I'm too busy to be thinking about that right now. Then go be busy, Kate. I didn't mean to rally you like that. Who's the other person sitting in the car? You can walk to the subdivision. Light pours from the partially open garage. An SUV. A four-door mid-sized SUV. An older model, well-maintained. Catherine crouches and peers beneath the garage door. Sports commentary blares from a tells Oh no, it's one of those people sitting there. <laughs> she still needs the space beyond the threshold. A compressor, ice chests, tackle boxes, stacks of cardboard, buckets of bolts and welding scrap. Kitchen supplies, a butane stove. Laundry baskets filled with cans of cat food. An old candle burned to its base and tipped onto the floor. Stacks of disintegrating newspaper, a microphone stand, a collection of shadeless lamps lined against the wall as if awaiting firing squad. Situated amidst the clutter, a man in a red folding chair watches the television, his back turned away. Um, Catherine leaves the portal to the garage and returns to the rainwater burning history. I'm not going to break into this man's house. I didn't, we don't need to do that quite yet. We'll save. Uh, anywhere else? Drainage can out. Mattress boss. When you want to buy a mattress and be a boss. I, I don't know. I, I don't know where I was going with that. I was trying to make a reference to boss coffee. No, I, I lost I lost track. Canal. The downpour finds its way into the drainage canal. Its water level slowly rising. They made an entire screen just for that. Like, there's a lot of work. Kenner. A fence adjoins the backside of the two strip malls. The crevice between them reveals a smear of light towards Williams Boulevard. Beyond the fence is drive through chicken, car audio, mattresses direct to you, water towers and power lines and crumbling concrete and traffic signs, abortive landscaping attempts, unkempt shrubs, solar-fed Christmas lights, weathered and forgotten. Brilliant. Uh, back to the lot. Uh, we'll just walk up to the mall entrance, I suppose. Some kind of recruitment video plays on the monitor above the entrance. Imagery flashes across the screen and punctuated by text. Three geometric shapes. Find all three. A name tag that reads Garrett pinned to a crayon blue shirt. Earn the badge. A tower circled by scaffolding. Find salvation in the stars. Find all three. Okay. Earn the badge. Garrett. Two teens speak in whispers behind the gate. Each has a similar bowl cut, lax shoes. And wears a blue college shirt with a name tag that reads Garrett. The older of the two eyes Catherine differently. Yeah. Uh, is the mall open? Been a long time since I've come to buy this mall. Is it still open? <laughs> the two boys snicker. Not for you. Uh, where are your parents? I don't know, watching Jeopardy or something. You got some candy for us or something? Give me a ride to base basketball practice. Glad we got this gate to protect us. 
Okay. We're trying to get inside. Other of you gentlemen care to help us into this place? No one's going to help you. You have to help yourself. Is this how you live your life? Walking around parking lots in the rain, asking for help? More, more or less, yes. I am a video game protagonist. It's time you take responsibility for yourself. Well, I am. I'm choosing to walk around in a car park in the middle of the night. It's time for you to take responsibility for yourself. Lift becomes strong. Oh no, the... <laughs> Do you even lift, bro? Get a new fit. You look like you're wearing a bag. No more soft drinks. But I hate soft drinks. Then don't drink them. You need to be initiated before we can even consider letting you in. Initiated how? Humorous. How many readings have you collected? Uh, Three. Bullshit. Then tell me how many days the arc took to complete. Uh, I believe it was 20. No, no, no. Years, dear. Took, I don't know, 20 days? So you have no idea what's going on around here. Guilty as charged. You need to pull yourself together. I can help you, but first you need to help yourself. Uh, how do I do that? Sad. Sad, yeah. Real sad. So listen, John's got an app, okay? You need to install it if you have any hope of making your way in here. Even once you're inside, you'll need the readings to visit the cathedral. A cathedral? The place where the divine object resides. Don't talk about that with the sieves, moron. Uh, what's the app called? What app? The one you just mentioned two seconds ago to get into the mall. Oh, John Kenner's, John's Kenner book. Oh, oh no, it's uh, Kenner John's Apocryphon. That's it. Kenner John's Apocryphon. Stole that shit! Catherine pulls out her phone. Okay, done. Congrats, you're on your way to being less of a fuck-up. Uh, how do we use the app? So what do I do with this app? It's an augmented reality viewer. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, so it's like Pokemon Snap. Okay. You gotta find John's... Co yeah, 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 it's just Pokemon Snap. He, he, he stole the source code to Pokemon Snap. You gotta find John's sculptures around town. Sculptures? Virtual sculptures. You can only see them on your phone. There's three. Find the sculpture, scan it with your phone, learn some shit. The first is in Bruce's yard. Don't make it easier for her. And Bruce is a garret now. Show some respect. Each one will give you a clue about the next. You're just giving the whole fucking thing away. She will not collect them all, Garrett. No need to worry. Yeah, true. That's what that last one's a nightmare. Listen, if you need help, go talk to friend. Who? Just open the Apocryphon app while st standing in the parking lot in front of the mall. You'll see friend. So, what's with the name tags? What's with the name tags? You work here or... Uh... No. Both tags say Garrett. Do you both have the same name or... Uh... No? Yes. Look, this is like some spiritual shit, okay? We can't just tell you about it. We did it to Tom Gooch. Dude, come on. She didn't even do the app thing yet. It's some spiritual shit. Just do the app thing and, and then you'll know the truth or whatever. Okay. Where did you say we can find friend? Uh, friends in the parking lot. Open the app. You'll find friend. Right. Got it. Buy. Uh, app. Kenneth John's. It's a nice, uh, nice design here. I don't. I don't like it. I don't know about you. I suppose this is friend. I am friend. Oh, uh, what are you? I am friend. He needs to work on his AI, but otherwise, the, the presentation's good. We need your help. Garrett said to speak to you. We don't know where to find the first sculpture. The first reading of John. Not far. In a yard. Right. Got it. Uh, what does Dallas have to think about? This a buddy of yours? Uh, right. Uh, no, we don't need to talk about it, that. Okay. So we don't talk to him. Uh, an electronic device. 
A small plastic case device lies on the grass. What's that thing? I had to guess I'd say it was a tracker. Don't know what use it is laying in the mud. Okay, let's open the app. Ah. First reading from the Apocryphon of Kenajon. The Apocryphon, apparently, is talking to us. It says, Early years you spend inside, TV on, Dad blaring the games. It says he keeps Christ in his heart, but it's a lie. Kenner is the only place on Earth. Nowhere to go, no one to hang out with. Your flesh is alien, the house is a prison. Only escape is through the fiber lines. <laughs> oh, buddy. You don't even know the half of it. Someone in the forums posts a flyer for a show. Somewhere to meet people. Something to do, whatever. You borrow your dad's car and go. Step into Saint Somewheres and you immediately know these aren't your people. These aren't your people, Garrett. You make a few jokes. Someone calls you a Nazi. You throw the first punch. Things spiral out of control. As you do. You're outside bleeding, pushing someone's face into a trash can full of go cups and beer bottles. The scum are screaming at you to stop, but you don't. Someone knocks you over the head with a floor jack. You fall to the ground, they think you're dead. You're unconscious for 13 days. You wake up with a slouched mouth on your left side, determined to ruin everyone's life. You watch the forums closer now. You call the cops on the next show, and the next show, and the next show. You get the place shut down for a while. Oh no, you've turned into the, uh, <laughs> the uh, right-wing safety squad. You didn't let up. Good job. Fuck the scum. I understand. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to read it again. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we shall exit. I suppose uh, we'll talk to the man now. What are you doing? Just, um, I don't know. Catherine steps into the garage. Wait here. Catherine regains her posture behind the door. The man doesn't notice her. Uh, hello? The man looks back and jumps in his chair. What the... Catherine lifts both hands, palms out. Sorry, sorry. How are you in my garage for? It's about Bruce, isn't it? Uh, yes. Ever since he got himself mixed up with that internet freak, people like you have been coming by asking about him. But I keep, keep, keep saying the same thing. I don't talk to him. Can't even get him on the phone no more. We, got, we work together at the plant in Norco, but he goes out of his way to avoid me. Of course he landed a computer job while I'm busting my ass with a torch all day. Won't even look his daddy in the eyes. My kid, she left, never came back. It's hard. Yeah, being a parent. It's hard business. Hard, all right. Can't focus on nothing around here. Always waiting for him to call. Even started digging through all these boxes, looking for this little stuffed monkey he'd carry around as a kid. Sounds just like my daughter. She had a monkey too. I had staring contests with it or something. It was really weird. Figured I could give it to him as some kind of peace offering. What would you tell him if he ever came back? Oh, I don't know. Get some sense. Guess I'd say. I'd say... I'd say, Bruce, you're my boy. And this is here as your home. Wouldn't turn you away for nothing. That cold shit, that garage shit, just let it go. Just come back home. That's what I'd say. If you see him, if you see Bruce, will you tell him that? Hell, you can even record it and hang on to it until you see him. He blocked my number. I can't get a word to him. Uh, I don't have anything to record with. Then come back when you do. I'll repeat it. Ain't got no shame left. Now go on. Get out of my gar garage. All right. Okay. Uh, sculpture here? No. Strange canal? Surely. Really? Nothing here? Okay. Uh, Alright then. Uh, we cannot go into the mattress boss. Uh... Probably not more. Are any of you Bruce? No. Um, can we use the app here? Okay. 
Apparently not. Uh, I think it told us. There's one that's by a... Uh, like a tower or something. Friend, help us out. Can you help us find the second of John's sculptures? The first reading of John reads, Try going to Saint somewhere. It's called Fash. Get knocked over the head with a tire iron. Oh, okay. So each one leads you to the next. Got it. Uh, oh. We need our phone to call Uber. Uh, I guess we'll go to Saint Somewheres. I'm ready to retire. Uh, we don't need to unlock him. He's just giving us hints. Oh, it's the uh, fellow that helped uh, set up uh, the thing. Ugh, my stomach still doesn't feel right. That hot dog finally catching up to you? This past couple of hours has been the worst experience of my life. Why'd you let me eat that thing? Uh, they seem fresh to me. The meat was a little grey, but otherwise it seemed fine. Yeah, that's what I thought too. After you left, my stomach started screaming. You know how hard it is to find a bathroom in the French Quarter? But you found one, that's good. No, I didn't find one. Um, that's enough. I could figure it out for myself. Well, this was fun. I better keep moving. Take care of yourself. Cheers. The door guy. Uh, before I talk to him, we'll look at him. The man working the door tunes out the cacophony while scrolling through cooking recipes on his phone. How charming. A small group gossips conspiratorially. The music spilling from inside drowns out all but the vaguest details. A love triangle, too much whiskey, someone kicking in the wall in a fit of rage. Right, yeah. Okay, talk to the door guy. No cover tonight, just checking IDs. What's happening tonight? What's going on inside? It's bounce night. Bounce night? Yeah. Crowd seems. Catherine glances around then to Dallas. Different than I'd expect. What are you looking at me for? Just, don't you agree? What, a bunch of kid, white kids shaking their ass to bounce so I'm supposed to give a shit? I didn't mean anything by it. All I listen to is Christmas music. That's all you listen to? Interesting. You're an interesting man, Dallas. Christmas music? That's it. That's the only thing I listen to. Seriously? I don't even start. Over here having bounce night for a bunch of white kids. So now it's a problem all of a sudden because all you listen to is Christmas music. Yeah, now it's a problem. That's right. Where are you from, stinky? Minneapolis. Enough said. Christmas music, just kind of creepy, that's all that you listen to. Creepy? I'm going to listen to you about what's creepy. Whoa, 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 boys, chill. <laughs> Christmas music is cozy, helps me react. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I I think it's nice. You know what? He's like Corona. Corona loves Christmas as well. That's cool, man. That's, that's fine. God damn. Uh, we don't need to tell them about the sculpture. We can just look on our ap application. It is not outside. It is therefore inside. We're looking for another one of those vo virtual sculptures. I doubt it'd be the in there. Really? Wouldn't it be? I mean, what else are we doing here? Uh, we're looking for a sculpture. We're looking for one of Kenner John's sculptures that ring a bell. You're talking about the douche whose little gang keeps calling the cops on me? Uh, presumably, yes. You don't look like one of those mole Nazis. What's this about? Uh, I'm an academic. I'm conducting research on this Garrett phenomena for an anthropology journal. No kidding. So if you visited the secret lair or whatever, they took over the old promenade mall. Some of us tried sneaking in there, but they got the thing locked, spot locked down. Anyhow, here's what I know. They've got some game they play on the phone. They stick these devices around town like Easter eggs. They find the devices, scan them with their phones, something like that. Not sure of the details. They hid one right outside the bar, so we had the little mall Nazis coming by every night to find it. But then last night, Ditch Man came and grabbed it. Ditch Man? It's all coming together. 
Who's the ditch man? He lives over by the mall. He's usually hanging around the ditches. Feeding the ducks. Well, right. That's presumably why they call him ditch man. I don't know the guy, but Bell vouches for him, so he must be alright. Sounds like we're heading back to the mall. Uh, why does he come around here, though? If this man lives all the way out in Kenner, what's he coming around here for? Uh, he buys stuff off Bell. What kind of stuff? Is it drugs? The man glances down at Catherine's shoes. Who, why do you care? I'm just looking for a way into the mall. I'll say this, ditch man gets stuff from here. He takes it to the mall. He thinks he's selling it to those little Nazis. Uh, why does John's gang call the cops on you? So why does John's gang keep calling the cops on you? I don't know. They try to get every show I book shut down. Maybe because they have nothing better to do. Or maybe because it's a, you're a liberal on the internet. Oh no. You tried sneaking into the mall. What's stopping you from getting into the mall? First we tried lifting the entrance gates, but they're all locked tight. They even fenced the banks of the canal, so you'd need a boat to get past them. We're thinking of going back with a couple of kayaks sometime. How about tonight? No, this'll this'll be going till at least two. I've got a shift in the morning. And that's rough, mate. Uh Okay. He's not gonna regale us with his his tales, uh, Saint Somewhere's once a modest neighborhood bar has moved through a succession of subcultural clientele over the past decade. First came the squatters, who took up a residence in nearby homes damaged by hurricanes or simple neglect. The squatters attracted the punks. The punks brought the hipsters. And no, not the hipsters. It now exists in a subcultural estuary. I like that. I like that. I, I love that notion. Only one change of ownership away from becoming an upscale wine bar. <laughs> Alright. Well, let us go back to the mall. Uh, to the ditch. Because that's how we have to go. Pay another 15 quid to go over here. Oh, there it is. Wasn't it, th it wasn't there before. That's not fair. A small plastic device lies on the bank of the drainage canal. Right. There it is. Second reading from the Apocryphon of Kenna John. Leave the hospital and discover faith. That's immaterial lessons. Pray, Garrett. Pray in the closet during the football games. Post prayers to the, sh to show to the show forums. Just to fuck with the scum. That's how the Garretts find you. One's named Garrett, so they're all named Garrett. Some kind of joke. Doesn't matter. You're Garrett too. 28 Garretts in all. Garrett worked in the basement below the council chambers. Said they had a closet full of old computers. Garrett plugged one in, used it as a server. That's not how it works. Was it running Windows NT? That's not how that works. You just can't plug in a, a computer and expect to run a server off it. That's how Garrett hosted sermons in the sky. He projected videos of a guy he found online. Said he grew up in Kenner just like Garrett. Garrett began watching him too and told the other Garretts to subscribe. Uh, soon all the Garretts were watching Kenner John. John summoned his flock to the ziggurat of Promenade Mall and taught them about Christ's hidden nature and other secrets of the faith. Oh God. Ah, ah. Jesus. H Christ. That's so... Fucking terrifying. Oh my god. Well, what do you think about Johnny? Don't you just hate him? A real fuck, isn't he? Can I help you? Catherine, dear, it is I who will be helping you on this night. I knew you'd come to see me waiting in the ditches, waiting. Waiting. No trouble there, child. Happy to do it. You need access to them all. Here I am. Delighted to assist. The man eyes the ring hanging from Catherine's neck. And you even wear the stone of the Magdalene, just as she herself wore it. You are the image of her beauty. Prage. Prage. You, why are you here? We were neighbours once upon a time. Don't you remember? I've only come to help, as neighbours do. He's so sad. Catherine shakes her head. What is this? It is my responsibility to guide you. And to watch over the children. 
I've been to CK. She's well. Excuse me. Uh, can you tell me what this is all about? It's about a boat. A boat that can get you into the mall. The Garretts, they favour me over John, that little shrimp. That little sad boy. I'll be your guide into the mall, the sanctum of the Garretts. I... Catherine turns to Dallas. This man, I think he's been following me. To help you! To help! I've always watched over you. But Blue, a good man, they say. An arsehole! He wouldn't let your pawpaw near you. Well, here I am. I came to tell you, you needn't worry about Kay. Keep her name out of your mouth. Because she'll be home, perhaps too late for you. Dying, they say, from becoming to be... From becoming to being the philosophers, say. Would you see my daughter? Walking through California like it were Galilee. Her robes frayed. Splendid, divine, a child of Christ. No, not getting in a ditch with this guy. Fuck, no. There's no else... No one else in this place to help you. Do you see anyone else? Anyone will help? I don't want your help. Don't want to be anywhere near you. Stay away from me and my family. Are we clear? I have all the time in the world, Catherine. But you, dear, you do not. I am not here to frighten you, to harm you. Quite the opposite. Without my help, there will be no getting into this mall. Patience is a virtue of your pawpaw. I am your only way in. Dallas leads Catherine in from the canal. Let's go find this last sculpture. We don't, we don't need his help. I know him. <laughs> the old man smiles and gives an enthusiastic wave. Dallas glances back towards the ditch. Sounds like a stalker. I just don't know. Seems like this parking lot is full of strange men who know your name. Am I missing something here? Look, I got around a lot. Okay. What, you think I'm inviting them? I don't know, maybe. I'm just as confused as you are. Oh, right. Well, that was weird. Uh, let's see here. Uh, friend. This last reading has me stumped. Discovering the third reading of John is the most challenging. I could not help Gooch. From the second reading of John. Uh, basement Sky. Yeah, go, go to City Hill. Got it. Understood. Very, very good. Uh, we'll call another Uber. Go downtown. Yeah. What well, we spent like... $50, $50 or so on, on Ubers in like the last 10 minutes. Uh, we need to go to the uh, council chambers. Which is, I guess, through the overpass. Sleepless. Are you one of those nerds that come around here to play with puppets? I'm not. No, not my scene. Good. We're back here trying to live a quiet life. These people with their haircuts... They come around here playing with puppets, making a big production. Then the cops show up and give us a hard time. I got chased away from my last spot. I'm not trying to deal with that again. Where was your last spot? Where were you before you ended up here? The mall in Kenna. I was one of the first after they condemned the building. A man lived in the closet. He was strange, but he kept it himself. No one bothered me in that place until the boys showed up. They chased us out, threatened the reporters. Little bastards. That guy, John, the leader, he should die. I hope the closet man lives up to his word and kills him. Oh, she must be talking about the ditch man. The, the ditch man came out of the closet. Now he's closet ditch man. City Hall. Uh, we have to get in here. Uh, right. The Garrett sent us. The guard looks up, to, looks Dallas up and down. No. We're here because of Kenner John. I've let a lot of people pass through in the evenings, wanting to take pictures from the roof or whatever the hell. None of them look like you two. Following my gut here. Uh, does the city know about this? So the city just lets these Garrets come in after hours? I do what I'm told. You looking for a reason? Go somewhere else. We're serious. We're training to become Garrets. Why? 
Because <laughs> carrots are cool, mate. Uh, we need to get inside the mall. We're trying to get inside Promenade Mall. That place has been boarded up for years. Not anymore, the Garrets took it over. God shakes his head. This whole city's lost its mind. Listen, there's some funny stuff that's happened in the building at night. If you're thinking you can just walk up to the roof, it's not like that. And be careful getting around. One of the generators went dead. The elevator's out, and so are all the stairwell lights. Catherine enters the building. There we go. It's nice that it just lets you in like that. Whoop. Ahead is an elevator corridor with a stairwell. The long, unmarked hallway extends to her left. The exit is at her back. Um, we need to go up to the roof, I take it. Catherine enters the elevator corridor. The floor display above the elevator reads blank. The stairwell is ahead. Press the panel. The floor displays above the elevator winks off before illuminating in. It reads blank. Doesn't sound like an elevator's coming. The guard said the generator that powers it is down. Let's keep moving. To the stairwell. Catherine enters the pitch black stairwell. Where do these stairs go? Will they go up? Catherine arrives at floor two. Uh, feel around. She detects nothing interesting in the dark. Okay, go up. Catherine arrives at floor three. Feel around. Nothing. Go up. Catherine arrives at floor four. Feel around. Nothing. Go up. Catherine arrives at floor five. Feel around. Nothing. Go up. Catherine arrives at floor six. It's, just, <laughs> it's becoming like that place in uh, Final Fantasy VII. Feel around. Catherine finds nothing. Go up. Catherine arrives at floor four. Seven. Feel around. After some fumbling in the dark, Catherine discovers a doorknob. Open it. Catherine enters an unlit office. She tries the light, no power. A window looks beyond Duncan Plaza towards the French Quarter. Okay, leave. Uh, go up. Catherine arrives at floor eight. Feel around. Nothing. Go up. Catherine arrives at floor four. Nine, even. Feel around. Oops, no, not go down, you fool. Go back up. <laughs> Blast those quads. Get, get your exercise in. Feel around. There's nothing. Go up. Catherine climbs to the floor ten, the final level. She sighs heavily. This is killing me. An exit sign casts an obscure red glow over the area. Ahead is a sealed door with panic bars. Mounted to the wall beside it is a magnetic card reader. This must lead to the roof. Try the door. It's locked. We have to go all the way back down. Uh, perhaps we can go down to... Um... Oh, it just lets us return to the ground level. Okay. Well, you don't have a magnetic card. You done in there? Not yet. Uh, right. Hmm. Well, there's one man in there. Hold on a moment. So, this would be... I take it the, the first floor, technically. Technically floor zero, but it's probably the first floor. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So, it's really the seventh floor that we're looking for. If we want to go up to that person. Okay, up to the second floor, up to the third floor, up to the fourth floor, up to the fifth floor, up to the sixth floor, and seventh. So, uh, the fellow should be on this floor somewhere. Interesting. Uh... 
Right. Uh, well, let's uh, go. I don't know. We'll talk to Sleepless here. Uh, doesn't like the internet boys. Can you go to the French Quarter? Was it found another dollar? No. We'll go find one. Same to you. Curious duck. Oh, okay, that's this shop. Is it? Uh... Dallas. Rosie. Nothing? Nothing at all? Uh, right. Uh, flannel ass is gone. He's left his uh, hot dog stand unattended. Nothing in the overpass. Padido Street. The uncanny smile of personal injury lawyer Martin Smart hangs above Interstate 10. His eternally quaffed hair clings desperately to his head. His hallmark blood-red tie catches the eyes of drivers speeding east. Just a click away, the sign says. Uh, no, we already thought about that. Can we go to the clinic? Attendant. Uh... No. Uh... Uh... No, not the French Quarter. I want to go to the uh, City Hall. Uh, nothing else. Can I just open it here? Oh, friend! Hello! Uh... So, perhaps the basement. Okay. Uh, well, how do we get to the basement? Oh, we can just go down here. Okay, there we go. Catherine descends the stairwell. A fading fluorescent bulb strobes in the hallway to her left. The stairwell is at her back. Uh, go left. Catherine turns the corner and immediately meets the stare of a man squatted on the ground in the stuttering light of the hallway. Hello. Hi. I wouldn't stick around too long. Why? What's that supposed to mean? The man's demeanour remains unchanged. He removes a receipt from his shirt pocket with a note scribbled on the back. He begins to read. On the seventh floor is a planner, but if you don't listen closely to the following, he'll hide. In the darkness, our hands as you must shake. Do so in the order I say. Any missteps in the elevator will clear the mistake. The first number in our sequence is the floor above the council chambers. Third most distant from the sky. Seventh, okay. There are 11 floors, should one count the basement. Okay, so eighth floor then. Our second number is that which makes an even divide. Um. Uh, and the third is just above it, fifth from the sky. Okay, thank you. So... The first number in our sequence is the floor above the council chambers, third most distant from the sky. So the basement is the most distant. One, two, three. Okay, so the third floor. And then... Which is actually the second floor, because the first floor is the basement, according to him. So... Go to the second floor, and then 
Our second number is that which makes an even divide. Uh, I guess the fourth floor, since that's even. It has to be an even floor. And the third is just above it. Fifth. Okay, so not... So it's actually the fourth floor. So it's two something and then... No, no, it is four. No, it is three. It is. It must be three because... Um, the third is just above it, which is four. Which is fifth from the sky. Okay. If you need help, friend is outside the building. Open the app and he'll be there. Good, good luck. Okay, got it. Okay, so go upstairs. Go to the up. On floor two, feel around. She feels the distinct touch of another's hand. Startled, she gasps, withdrawing her own. What is it? Someone's in here. Dallas speaks into the darkness. Uh, hello? The stairwell is silent, but for the dec decaying echo of his voice. Uh, reach out your hand. An unseen hand grasps firmly and shakes. Okay. So then go up to the third floor. Because it should just be two, three, four. Because... The fifth from the sky would be five minus one, which is four. Uh, reach out hand. Excellent. Good. Go up. Reach out hand. Grant. Fantastic. That's three handshakes. Nothing happened. I think we got it wrong. What's it say on the receipt? Hit the elevator button and try it again. Got in the basement and said, friend is right outside, we need help. Okay. Um, okay, fine. We'll go back down. Go down. So definitely on two. And something that evenly divides. Well, nothing evenly divides 11. So, I guess it would be five. Do we have to go all the way back up to five and then down to four? Uh, that wasn't it, not it either. <clears throat> uh, uh, right. Uh, okay. On the seventh floor is a planet, but if you all right. Uh, the first number in our sequence is the floor above the council chambers. Third most distant from the sky. There are 11 floors, should one count the basement. Our second number is that which makes an even divide. So it just has to be an even number, not necessarily that. And the third is just above it. Fifth from, fifth from the sky. So 11, which would be 10. Floor 10. So, yeah, fifth from the sky. So, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. So, so it should be two, five, six then. All right. Okay. 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 Go okay, up. Two. Five. Even though that doesn't make an even divide. I guess it makes an even divide if it's 10 floors is what he's talking about. I'm not really sure about that hint. Uh, 
and now six. Begins to pull Catherine slowly towards the door. She grabs Dallas, attempting to resist. Catherine? It's... The hand jerks her violently to the floor. Dallas attempts to intercept the figure in the dark, but only meets the wall. Hey. He slaps the wall. Tell me who the fuck is there. His echo trails off into the extremities of the, hall, of the stairwell. As Catherine looks up from the ground, a light switches on above them. Dallas, help me, please. Dallas recovers Catherine from the floor, and she hangs her arm over his shoulder. You're not in any kind of condition to be doing this shit. I know. I see a light. She gestures weakly. Up there. I'll carry you. No, it's it's fine. Let's just go find this planner, get to the roof, whatever it takes to be done here. Okay. Uh, a narrow thread of light shines from the doorway to the planning office. Enter the doorway. Catherine steps into the warm lamplight glow of the 7th floor office plaza, overlooking Duncan Plaza. A man sits at the desk, facing the window. He looks back at Catherine, looks away. Office is closed. Uh, you working late? The planner looks at Catherine over his slouched shoulder. No later than usual. Keep listening. We're drafting a new master plan. Catherine nods and leans against the jam of the door. It's been an ordeal. You may have seen about it in the news. The antagonism in this city, my god. Everyone wants something different. The planner looks away from the Catherine. Keep listening. I'm the one they hate the most. The other planners are all more young, interesting, younger. They're passionate about the work. I'm old now. I watch them bulldoze the projects. I wanted it. wanted them to go on. You don't know what the wrong decision is until you make it. Oh, buddy. Tell me something I don't know. The road splits and you have to keep going. The highways, they have to go somewhere. The houses, they go in a flood sometime. As he speaks, he crouches into himself in an odd and anxious way. No one wants to relocate, but the stubbornness of nature is unmatched. It drives the rest. In the end, it drives our decisions. It forces them, you see. I understand. Floods have made a lot of decisions for me. Some will confront these decisions before others. This creates an imbalance. It creates the co conditions for conflict. When we plan, we don't plan for a community. We plan for a city at war with itself. We decide the winners and losers. As the stakes grow higher, the losers, well, they are going to hate us. He returns his gaze across his shoulder and meets Catherine's eyes before looking away a final time. Gives me a fucking ulcer. Anyway, I'm trying to get to the roof, mate. I was hoping I could get access to the roof. The planner turns in his chair. I see. Any chance you could help? You don't look like the other ones, I'll say that. Excuse me? Where's your shirt? The planner dismisses Catherine with a hand wave and points towards a coat rack near the door. Keycard's hanging on the rack. He returns to his original posture facing the window. Catherine grabs the card key. Leave. You know, some people just take the jobs way too seriously. Alright, try the door. Scans, Catherine scans the ID badge and pushes open the door. Exit to the roof. Catherine steps through the door into the cool winter air above City Hall. I need to sit for a moment. Of course. Dallas gestures to a nearby air conditioning unit. Let's sit. Getting too old for this shit. <laughs> Running around like this on my 49th birthday. What a life. Birthday? Today's your birthday? Today's my birthday. At least it's memorable. No question there. You alright? I'm fine. Just needed to breathe for a minute. That was strange. Could never be normal with Super. Always gotta be some shit like that. So why keep doing it? I don't know. Dallas lifts his hand in resignation. There's not much else, really. Not anymore. What would you rather be doing? What could you do, if you could? What I'd like to do is be home with my daughter and my grandchild. Where's home? Holly Grove. Right near the canal. 
They started staying with me a few months back. They liven up the place. Kids will do that. You got any? A son and a daughter, two years apart. Still at home? My younger one, I can't get him out of the house. But my daughter, she doesn't want anything to do with me. Thought maybe when I was diagnosed she'd come around, but uh, she never did. Catherine looks towards the westbound traffic. No, she never did. Hurts to be dropped like that. Sometimes it hurts worse the more time passes. I just know I won't see her before I die. And that... It does. It does hurt. It hurts and then you die. <laughs> it's not all that bad. Just hope there's something on the other side. There is. I know there is. The ones I hurt and left behind, I'll see them there. I'll get to apologise. Amen to that. But let me ask you the same question you asked me. Why do you keep doing this? Not a lot of runners out our age. It's a long story. This is my first time on the app, but things have been interesting for a while now. I tried to have a straight job once upon a time, but that didn't last too long. Yeah, why not? Let's just say I lied on my resume. Nearly everyone you meet has a story like that in this line of work. Nothing special about me. I wouldn't say that. The old man in the ditch thinks you're special. <laughs> Let him think that. So you'd figure this lost glass sculpture is around here somewhere. So there's something about it being in the sky? Well, let's try it. Uh, does not appear to be in the sky. Oh, I have to actually physically look up. Got it. Oh, there it is. Third reading from the Apocryphon of Kenajon. New Orleans is a pit and Garrett's stuck in it. New Orleans is the lowest, the lowest world. A messenger visits John, tells him about the early faithful now living in the cavities of the Martian moons. That's cool. Tells him there's a way to commune with them through the Adamic language of the angels and spellcasters and others who know God's mind, yes. There's a chrism, a fluid that John must imbibe. It's in an egg that floats in the sky. John is blessed with a plan to escape the low world's reach. The Garrets must build a space-faring ark, a vessel with which to leave this earth. Having imbibed the chrism, John may ascend beyond the distortion of the low world and listen for the twilight language. Two Garrets work together at Stennis. John appoints them to oversee the task. They soon find other engineers sympathetic to their plan. The Garrets labour for 800 days and in that time the Ark is complete. All that remains is the egg which holds the chrism to know God's mind. So is that it? We found all three. Let's go ask the kids at the mall. The Superdome. Silly Jimmy's Superdome. They changed it again. What was it before? Pearl Dish Soup Soap Superdome? Handsome Burgers Superdome? I don't know. I lost track. Uh, right. So, we can just uh, leave now. We'll call an Uber from the roof. Oh. We can't. Okay. Now we can call an Uber. Return to the uh, promenade mall. A text message has been received. Uh. Whoops. Uh. Super Doc, Catherine, we will send in advance to your wallet in order for you to complete the mission, but please do not waste our time. Uh, cheers. Thank you, Superdoc. Uh, well, we have money now, so that's good. Uh, the promenade mall. Uh, where'd they go? There's two little shits. Where do they go? Hell. Why don't we just waste our time? We have to get in there. Only one option comes to mind. Creep in the ditch? Afraid so. This night I hate it. A scale model is encased in glass. The plaque at its base reads Ark. Do you think that is? 
I was to say, it almost looks like an oil rig for a spaceship. Okay. We'll get back to the drainage canal and talk to this weirdo that's been standing there in the rain for about three hours now. Okay, poor, poor. We, we need your boat. Oh, <laughs> how wonderful. A boat ride into John's a fucking skull. We'll live inside it. Calm down, keep your distance. Lower your voice. We need the boat, not you. More the more, John Skull, John Skull. The boat is just a little further down the canal. Let's go. Let's go and visit the Sanctum of the Garrets. Okay. That. That happened. Uh. It hasn't quite been two hours. But my voice is uh, failing me. Uh, because I did that. Uh, Dustin Hoffman in Blue Velvet. Oh no, I'm sorry, not Dustin Hoffman, Dennis Hopper. <laughs> I did Dennis Hopper in Blue Velvet and it ruined me. So I think I'm going to call it here. Uh, so we'll go back to the title screen momentarily. Uh, that would be this. Yes. All right. Who? So, this was weird. Man, I love this game. This is a cool game, man. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people say. I don't care if three people watch this. I, I think this is amazing. People people need to play this. It's it's a good game. It's, it's so weird. I like it because it does a very good job of mixing reality with fantasy in a very believable way. And crafting a very believable world and that is very 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 difficult to do as a writer it it's very difficult so the fact that they can do this in such a way is is very uh, commendable so uh, that'll be it for tonight thank you very much uh, all the what watchers anybody who might watch this in the future or in the past somehow i don't know how you do that um Right, uh, I've been Wizard, this has been Norco, and uh, yeah, till then, cheers.